welcome back to basics where we're going to take a look at some terrain specifically we're going to talk about forward slopes and reverse slopes what they are what they look like and some ways to use them to do so i am standing on a ridge which is nothing more than a linear hill it's got a slope on either side a slope is just the gradient change whether it is forward or reverse depends on its spatial relationship to the enemy so for the purposes of this video, we're going to say the enemy is over there, on the other side of the valley. That means that, right now, I'm on the forward slope of our ridge. I'm on the slope that faces the enemy, and the crest of the ridge is behind me. To understand what's important about this, we need to think about how we and the enemy can apply our firepower. Set up here, we've got this great big field of fire in front of us. We can see the enemy coming from a long way away and we can engage out to long range. We're maximizing our potential observation and fire. But at the same time, fields of observation and fire cut both ways. The enemy can see us and engage us as well. So, if we have an advantage in direct firepower over the enemy, it makes sense for us to exploit forward slope positions. If the enemy has a direct firepower advantage, we want to avoid setting up on forward slopes so that we don't get pasted. The kicker in modern warfare is that direct firepower is much inferior to indirect firepower. Artillery dominates the modern battlefield, and it doesn't need to be massed in line of sight to be effective, it just needs an observer to call it in. So forward slopes have become very dangerous because they're more exposed to enemy observation and thus enemy artillery. A reverse slope is the opposite. If I turn around and go up and over the crest before turning to face the enemy again, I'm now on the reverse slope. I'm on the slope of the ridge that faces away from the enemy and the crest is in front of me. Obviously, from here, I can't see as much. I can see the slope up to the crest and that's it. So we have very short fields of observation and fire. The enemy can get all the way across the valley and up the forward slope before we can even see them, never mind engage them. But on this side of the crest, the ridge is now shielding us from enemy observation and fire. If the enemy has a lot of firepower, we're going to be a lot safer on the reverse slope where they can't see us. Obviously, whether we're attacking or defending, we want to exploit the advantages and minimize the disadvantages of both forward and reverse slopes. The key here is understanding the capabilities you have available and how they are going to interact with potential enemy capabilities. Rifle squads, for example, are generally most effective at short ranges, certainly under 300 meters. If we dig some infantry in on a forward slope, they might be able to see a long way, but chances are they're going to be outranged by enemy direct fires and very exposed to enemy indirect fires. Moving infantry onto the reverse slope mitigates that problem, allowing them to simultaneously avoid long range fire, maneuver out of sight as necessary, and because the enemy will appear at the crest, which is a known fixed point, position themselves to start engagements at the most effective range. Anti-tank weapons, on the other hand, may be wasting their potential on a reverse slope. ATGMs with multiple kilometer ranges are obviously not going to get much use out of reverse slope positions where the enemy can appear at close range. In fact, they may be considerably less effective depending on their guidance systems and their rate of fire. So although forward slopes are more exposed, Longer ranged weapon systems may be better off deployed on them, trying to keep a low signature so they can engage the enemy at arm's length and get as many shots off as possible as the enemy closes. It's an obvious point, but one to bear in mind that units can move between forward and reverse slopes as circumstances dictate. Artillery observers, for example, are probably best employed on forward slopes that maximize their field of observation. They are, however, very vulnerable to being overrun if the enemy can get close. So pulling them back over the crest into pre-planned positions on the reverse slope at the right time is a good move. In a similar vein, visibility conditions can change the equation. Darkness or fog can make forward slope positions much more viable and even necessitate their use. 
the main reason for avoiding forward slopes is that they are exposed to long-range enemy fire and observation. If that threat is reduced by environmental conditions, then range envelopes can and will change, meaning that staying on a reverse slope may involve giving up ground unnecessarily. Moving infantry from a reverse slope to a forward slope at night to prevent enemy infiltration is a classic example, and modern enablers like thermal images and night vision equipment can further alter the dynamic. If you can see through morning fog and your enemy can't, you're missing an opportunity to get some free hits in if you choose to stay on the reverse slope. Finally, forward and reverse slope positions are broadly characterised by different styles of engagements. Attackers advancing on a forward slope defence are exposed to fire for more time over a longer distance, so forward slopes have a more attritional character. Attacking over the crest into a reverse slope defence is more likely to be characterised by sudden shock as attackers cross a threshold into a predefined engagement at the defender's chosen range, so engagements on reverse slopes are more likely to be short and sharp. That then is a very quick overview of forward and reverse slopes with a couple of tactical pointers. In modern warfare, especially since 1914, firepower and especially artillery have become so dominant that in any defence, reverse slope positions are the go-to. This doesn't mean that forward slopes aren't useful, but they need to be exploited much more carefully and with the minimum force necessary. The key point to remember is that it's all about firepower and exploiting the terrain to maximise the effects of your own while minimising the effects of the enemy. Hope you all enjoyed this one, found it useful and interesting. I'll catch you in the next video.